Now let's talk about posing and proxy pose. We've already done in the previous video, we've already like, you know, gone in here to geometry, proxy pose, go ahead and just hit proxy pose. The default settings are fine. Uh, and then if I want to pose this guy out, all I got to do is, you know, hold down control, go in here to mask lasso, and then just kind of mask uh, where you want. Now in this case, and then invert that mask and then rotate this stuff around or move, move scale, rotate, control tap to blur, blah, blah, blah. And then as you move these uh, low res proxy verts around, as soon as you exit proxy pose, the high res verts will follow. And of course, this is just a DynaMesh. There's no subdivision or anything. So it's kind of a free subdivision posing solution. However, you are having to go in there and do a lot of masking in order to move this guy around so let's go ahead and do both of all of that and so all the way back to where we started and we'll go ahead and again jump into proxy pose we have a low res mesh and we can go ahead and do a z sphere rigging um, you can do z sphere rigging for i usually mostly for organic stuff because it's like a smooth bind that you would do in like a, in any other 3d program but what we can do is we can put bones, Z-sphere bones inside of here, and those will act as influences that we can rotate uh, these uh, polygons around, and then we can update our high-res mesh. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, easy way to do that, especially for this type of mesh. Since this is all just one mesh, all we have to do is, well, we, we need two things. First, we need access to this mesh. Previously, I did say in the previous video underneath geometry, there is a keep current. There's an easier way to get access to this geometry. So if I go in here to append a Z-sphere, now we have a Z-sphere, so go ahead and select it. Let's tap X to go into X symmetry because this is a symmetrical object. I'm gonna turn on transparency so we can see where this goes. Move, scale, and rotate, W, E, and R are all up here. So I can go in here to W and move it up and then E to scale it down. Uh, we don't need to rotate while we're making our bones but we'll definitely need it while we're moving our bones to pose so i'm going to go ahead and put this where the hips are and uh yeah, i'll get to the the duplicate in just a second so if i hit q to go into draw mode now we're going to be drawing z spheres if i zoom in you'll see we have x symmetry turned on again if you just tap x on your keyboard that toggles activate symmetry on and by default we're active in the x-axis which is left and right of our character if we turn on the floor the x-axis is left and right the red one so uh we're right here in the root of our character i'm going to click and drag with draw. So Q, again, Q, W, E, R, Q is draw. And then when I'm done drawing, tap S on your keyboard or go up here to draw size. And then uh, just make this really, really a small brush size. Cause if the, the larger your brush size you make, so if I go in here to Q and then draw another one here, if you got two Z spheres really close to one another and your draw size is huge and you go in here to move one, it's gonna move everything within that brush radius. So tap S, make your brush radius really small, hit W. And then instead of like dragging it to the knee and then making another duplicate or, you know, keep drawing it, I, what I usually do is just go down all the way to the very uh, tip of the toe. So here we are at the hips all the way to the toe, hit Q, and now you can just push or press anywhere in that chain and then hit W and you can move these into place. Hit Q, W, move it into place, hit Q, then go to W and move it into place. So Q to draw and then W to move. And it's basically just doing that over and over and over again. Just like any good practice or best practices with moving uh, Z-spheres or placing bones in an object, you kind of want to put it center mass, generally speaking. So we're just going to go through here and put our bones about uh, in the middle of our geometry here. Don't worry too much about the scale of the bones. It's really more about the location of these Z-spheres is where their active influence is. You don't need to worry about like, oh, well, if I go in here and make this really huge, will it influence more? Not any more than another Z-sphere just sitting in here. So generally speaking, and we can also, underneath stroke curves helper, there is a scale Z-spheres to draw size. So if you ever want to make them all uniform, like if you go back in here at Q, uh, just draw this out. So you just click and pull uh, to draw another Z-sphere. And this one's big. Uh, we'll draw this all the way up to, boy, he's got some interesting anatomy. Um, let's say here-ish and then hit Q. And you're going to see these are now all different. Oops, hit Q uh, down here. There we go. These are all different sizes. If you want, you can just make your brush size whatever size you want your Z-spheres and then go in here to stroke, scale Z-spheres to draw size and it'll make them all uniform. So again, it's not necessary, but just in case it's bugging you. Uh, so we're gonna go through and just keep creating bones. If you want, you can turn off uh, transparency with that ghost option, just turn off ghost. And then when you draw, it'll actually snap to the geometry. Um, so you can go through here and you can hit W and just kind of move this around. I'll leave that up to you. So. In this case, we have all the way to the skull here. And actually, this is going to be kind of like the upper part of the head. So I'm going to hit Q and move this back to the neck. And then from here, I'm going to hit Q and draw one right down the middle. So it 
Let's scoot this camera around. There we go, right down the middle here. And that's going to be my lower jaw. So we'll actually have the cranium and then the lower jaw. Uh, we can hit Q and put a little um, extra bone in here for the neck. Uh, out from here, let's go ahead and draw and then hit W to move. We'll go out here to the shoulders. Um, I'll show you how to put helper joints in here for like clavicle movement as well. Uh, but for now, I'm going to hit W. We'll move this all the way down. And since he has so few fingers, usually what I do for a character is just like go to the wrist and then I'll transpose mask the fingers. But since he has so few, I'm just going to go to the very tip uh, of the finger here, like we were talking about, and then hit Q, W, and just kind of put one in the wrist and then Q and then W to put one uh, where his arms are. And then really quickly, uh, so here's this, and then we'll hit Q, we'll go to, uh, let's move this over here to the tip. Okay, so here's the first finger joint, and then Q, second finger joint, I'm having a hard time, Q, there we go. And then to get the other fingers going, let's go back up to the wrist, hit Q and drag out. That'll make a new Z sphere, and then I'll go to, again, the bottom of the finger, and then from the side I'm gonna hit Q, and then W, Q, and then W to position, position, position. There we go, I'm gonna leave that pinky out. Uh, then for the thumb, we're gonna go back up to the wrist, oops, hit Q, and then move to here. And you'll notice when I rotate it, I'll show you that in just a second, you can actually rotate down the chain, and that's the cool thing about using Z spheres as bones. Um, do I need another joint here? Yeah, one right here, is, uh, you now have a hierarchy of shapes. So when I go in here to start posing this thing, in fact, let's go ahead and turn off uh, this. We had this mesh turned on, which is what it was actually snapping to. So we have this Z sphere that we're drawing. If I go through here and I say uh, hit R to go into rotate, when I rotate just this joint, just click on that joint and rotate, it'll rotate the joint and everything below it. And I can also rotate here to rotate out. So instead of you know, this is kind of rotating along its uh, long axis. Here I can grab the bone in between and rotate. You can hit E to scale and that'll scale down the children. So you can see if I click on the bone here, this is the joint, this is the joint, let's say, and this long one in between is the bone. If I scale here, it'll scale all the children. However, if I go and scale just the bone, it'll scale just that joint uh, that I'm scaling on. Um, so again, if you just wanna scale the joint, you can. Uh, if you want to scale all the children, you just grab the bone and scale. Uh, same thing with W, you can hit W and you can move an individual joint around or you can grab the bone and move all the children underneath it. Generally speaking, when we're posing, you just want to hit R to go in here and rotate because you're just rotating joints, just like in the human body, you're just rotating joints uh, along their axis, right? Uh, so here, so we'll, here's the thing. We have a mesh here and then we have a Z-sphere uh, bone system and we want to put this mesh on the Z-sphere bones. So if I hide this mesh here and we go down here under Z-spheres, uh, there's a rigging section with your Z-sphere selected and there's a select mesh. However, if you go in here and you say, hey, uh, I wanna select my uh, mesh here, it's, it doesn't exist or you can't see it. Um, so what you have to do is go in here and then instead of like I did in the last video where I said you could go in here to proxy group and say keep current, all you gotta do is have the selected, say make poly mesh 3D, boop. That'll put out a little copy right here, super easy. Um, in fact, it already has it selected. It's just the exact, it's an exact duplicate of this mesh, same vert order. And from the previous video, you know that vert order is very important. You don't wanna break that. Um, and the good news is we can now go back to our original, here's our original mesh with our proxy pose turned on. Here is our Z-sphere chain. I can now go down in here to rigging and say select mesh, and now we can see it. That's our make poly mesh 3D version duplicate. So I'm gonna select that mesh, and now uh, if I turn this one back on um, and select it, it, it's still sitting there. Don't worry about that right now. This is just our original high-res mesh sitting in proxy pose phase. We'll update that in a second, but for now I'm just gonna turn that eyeball off, go to our Z-sphere. Our Z-sphere chain now has, if I go back down here to rigging, now has a mesh selected. So we went in here to select mesh, we selected it, and then under here we have a bind mesh. So when I click bind mesh, I can now go through here hit uh, again R to rotate and I can rotate my bones and it will go and update this object. So if I wanna go in here and rotate the arm instead of having to go, like, go and mask and then mask the wrist. Actually, I should have, uh, now that I see this, I should have put a bone down here and then a bone for the wrist. I need to put one up above. Not a big deal. The good news is if I'm like, ah, oh, so there's two things here. When I go to rotate his arms out, you're gonna see, oh boy, it's taking a lot of his lats with him. 
I want his lats to kind of stay with his ribs. And I forgot to put a wrist joint in here. So when I go in here to like rotate his wrist, I can go along the axis here, but I can't like rotate it down because it just does individual fingers, which again, isn't too bad. I can go in here and rotate the fingers individually. I need to make some changes. Let's check out the legs. Legs aren't too bad. And I completely forgot about the tail. Whoops. So now when I move his legs, his tail just kind of stretches along with it. So I have some problems, right? Not a huge deal. Go out of bind mesh. That puts you back into your default pose or the pose you started with. And now you can update the, um, the chain. So I'm going to go in here to W and move this in, hit Q. I'm going to put in a wrist bone here that I can now rotate the entire uh, hand around. Let's move this here. And then uh, for the tail, we're going to go to the back here. I'm going to hit Q and I'm going to draw. Oops, let's go again right down the middle here on this one. There we go. And then W to move it down. And then um, just hit Q a couple times along here and we'll just position these. And depending, it kind of depends on how much fidelity you want in the tail. Um, again, if you want to rotate with very fine increments, just put more bones in there. Uh, now, when I move the arm out, these individual Z spheres are influencing all the geometry within the radius of that Z sphere, let's say. So when I rotate this arm out, it's pulling the lats along with me. So what I need is a Z sphere sitting in here that will keep this geometry with that Z sphere or that influence of the Z sphere. So how I can, and, and the other thing important to remember is I want that to be associated with my rib cage. So here's my spine. I'm going to go ahead and hit Q and then draw off of my rib cage here and hit W and I'm going to move this over so that I can move the a z sphere that's parented to my spine that's now my rib cage so now if i put a z sphere right here it's going to influence all these polygons within that radius and in fact i can even go down here and make another one here and uh, let's see if there's anything else i don't know we can just test it out and see if we need any more so now if i'm like okay let's give this a shot i'm going to say bind my mesh and now if i go in here and hit r to rotate and i move my arms out you're going to see the lats stay with this one and in fact um yeah and also when i move the legs the tail doesn't squish with it because the tail has its own bones so now i can move the legs independently and then here for the tail i can go through here of course you don't need x symmetry on just tap x to turn that off and then you can like you know swing the tail uh, to the left here. So again, we're just going through and we're testing our rotation and making sure that everything feels right. And I have a head that I can nod and then I have a cranium upper here and then a lower mouth right here. Um, right now, the lower mouth is kind of impacting the chest. So we might need to put some helper items he along here uh, or some helper bones here, but everything else seems to be looking okay. I don't have any real problems with it. So let's go out of bind mesh pose and you can you can go from the ribs towards the chest or you can just continue this chain here. Um, let's go ahead and turn on X symmetry again. So when I hit Q to draw, move into place, you know, we'll do this one here. Q to draw, move into place. So now again, these will keep the influence more on the rib cage that I can um, move independently and uh, maintain the influences on the rib cage and not have it follow, you know, the, the head joints or anything like that. So, okay, so now we're ready to pose. Everything's looking good. Everything's bound correctly. So we'll go ahead and put this guy in a nice menacing pose. I'm gonna go in here to bind mesh, hit R to rotate. Uh, let's turn off X symmetry. And generally speaking, you wanna kind of start from the core of the character because everything's gonna follow, right? You now have a hierarchy of child and parent relationships. You can go through here and we can like rotate this guy to the side. He's gonna lift his arm up and kind of maybe reach forward with this arm. And then maybe to balance him out, he'll reach backwards a little bit. And we'll, now that we have a wrist, we can kind of bend his arm back and can rotate uh, these fingers. And again, the reason I'm doing more rotations is because if I go in here and like scale, it'll let you, but you probably don't wanna like balloon his leg out, right? Or if I go in here to move, you can grab the bone, it'll actually move down the axis and give you a really cool um, kind of an FK kind of look. So that's not too terrible. However, if you grab an individual bone and move it, that'll do like a non-uniform scale and it'll let you do it. So just be careful with that. So generally speaking, I just kind of stick with rotations. So we can, again, we're just looking for, you know, weight and balance here. So just very quickly going through and say, oh, move this leg back and move this leg forward so we can grab his uh, balance here. And we can like rotate this leg out here and you'll get a feel for like, 
if you need to grab the end of a bone to kind of rotate along its axis, or if you need to grab the bone itself to, um, you know, get the rotation you want if you want to move his leg out or forward or back or something like that. Uh, and then his uh, tail here, we'll go ahead and swoosh it to the right here. Oops, there we go, swoosh that to the right. And then again, as we move any bones, if you need to keep, so let's go ahead and rotate this here. I think mean, it actually works astoundingly well but with these helper joints what you can do is you can actually hit W and you can go through here and you can kind of just retain any volume that you want they're just kind of sitting here influencing uh, vertex position so you can just go through here and just kind of instead of sculpting you can just go in here and just grab your your little helper joints and just do a little bit of moving around to kind of get those um, about what you would want so again we can open up his mouth here with move or you know probably a little bit better idea is go in here and rotate here we can kind of rotate it to the side you can turn off um, oh, it looks like turning off transparency doesn't do much so it might be a little bit hard to see if you want to preview this go in here to adaptive skin turn off density turn dynamic resolution down to one remember the proxy pose vertex order is very important we don't want to change that if you have density of two that's going to give it a subdivision, which we don't want. Uh, Dynamesh is going to give you a Dynamesh mesh, which is what we don't want. We want to maintain this exact vertex order. So turn this down to one, Dynamesh down to zero. You can hit A to turn on this preview button or just tap A. And then now you can see here's our mesh. Look at that. Rawr. So really cool. I like this. Uh, I want to use it. So how do we get this mesh to influence this one? Well, if you remember from the previous video, what we could do is when we go back to our proxy pose mesh and turn off transparent and go into solo mode. This is our proxy pose. This is our Z sphere adaptive skin uh, with the exact same vertex order that's basically our proxy pose posed. So all I got to do is go in and select our proxy pose mesh. And then it, because we don't have a bunch of duplicates, it's not going to open a menu, but you can go in here and say overwrite pose. Boop, and that'll automatically pick the only other option it has available that has the same vertex order, which is this Z sphere uh, preview. So now your Z sphere preview has been copied into your, your proxy pose mesh. So we're in proxy pose now. So if I go out of proxy pose, it's now going to move our high res dynamesh into this pose here. And now we have a really cool menacing uh, rancor all nicely posed out for you.